<laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Bombfell. Head on over to bombfell.com slash R-O-G-U-E and get $25 off your first purchase. All right, Brian, you get sent to prison. Uh, yeah, as one does. It's uh, gonna happen. What is the most resourceful, inventive thing that you can build or create behind bars? I guess I would rely on the, uh, the 10 years of 500 plus episodes of Scam School. Okay. I would imagine that I would be a very entertaining fellow inside prison. I'd be a court jester. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> I could see you thriving in that yeah, environment. Well, what about you? What would you do? You, uh, you I would tell ghost stories? I you would, would be a dungeon master. I would be in the dungeon master. D&D is huge behind bars. Is it? Yeah. We've seen articles about how they fake dice with toilet paper yeah. to play their own dice games. Do they make D20s? Yeah, sure. Of toilet paper? Sure. And I'm glad you're prepared because guess where you're going this episode? Oh, good, good. Now I get to let some hardened criminal, it's like, yeah. A 15 is a natural crit. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> Six unreal prison builds. All right, Murphy, we're going back to prison. We're going to run down the six craziest things people have built behind bars. If people haven't heard, we have new articles every single day at themodernrogue.com. This one's written by Ian Forty. Where do we start? Two contraband computers hidden in the ceiling. My favorite thing that prisoners have built behind bars. It is wonderful in Marion County, Ohio. A couple of guys built two computers. Okay, look, we built a computer and it took all day and everybody complained about how expensive our build is. And how we had everything given to us. <laughs> yes. how, how do you do that behind bars? They were tasked with one of those menial jobs in prison. Their job was to strip electronics. Uh, decommissioned computers or whatever, parts that didn't work. So they just accumulated enough eventually to build not one, but two functioning and internet capable devices. Well, and it's the internet capable that really matters. Cause I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's great if they're able to play joust or whatever <laughs> joust. That's, that's they, all you they, need. They have MAME on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But how do they get it connected to the, to the network? They hit it in the ceiling, wired it into the prison's cat five cables and to get access they got the password of a prison contractor that was hardly ever there. Oh, that's great. So they, they were logged in in the intranet that had access to the uh, the outer net, the, the internet. There's a word for <laughs> the it. The outer net, yes, that's what it's called. <laughs> Cyberland. <laughs> yes. They were web surfing. Oh, got it, on the information superhighway. <laughs> that's the one, yeah. So, okay, so they're online. They had an old AOL disk. <laughs> so I would imagine they took turns sticking their head up in the ceiling and having somebody else be in the Look out or I guess so, but ultimately, someone from the prison's IT staff found an inordinate amount of traffic flowing through the network. <laughs> They're like, look, I know we've all been to Pornhub, but this guy's going a lot yeah. on company time. And of course, that was one of the things they were hitting up. But they were also looking up how to make homemade drugs, how to commit tax fraud. Oh dear. Yeah, so they were still committing crimes. It wasn't like, let's use this computer we built to get out. No, it's let's use it to make more crime happen. All right, what grade do we give these guys? I am going to give them an A. I, 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 a, a plus plus on my side. Because yes. Not only for the difficulty of what they did, but the fact that they essentially brought all the benefits of being at home. Like, yeah. I, I think I could do really well in prison if, if I just had, had gigabit, <laughs> you know? I mean, what I love about this is that they didn't build weapons or devices or a, an interesting way to make soup or enchiladas or something. They built technology. Yeah. And uh, then they just utilized all the resources they had around them. It was extraordinarily inventive. They're masters. Agreed. Maybe this is why our video on this topic is age restricted. Now here's one that's really within our wheelhouse, something that we've done before. Using the principles involved in grain silo fires. Yeah. Which we did an episode on, and they use something that you are also very familiar with, the flammability of non-dairy creamer. Yeah, so we originally ran into that on Scam School, where we were able to make a coffee creamer flamethrower. When we did our silo fire episode, did we use flour or coffee creamer? We tried both. Yeah. Uh, they're both really fine texture. And, and, and I guess what you want is a suspension of, of fuel and air, right? So you just want to mist it up and then an ignition source that creates an explosion. And of course, if you throw sh shrapnel in there, if you uh, make it of a substance that will explode, you can cause a lot of damage. It can be really, really deadly, as we saw with some of the grain silo fire videos. These guys were making bombs. They got caught testing one when they threw it into a stairwell. Testing, caught testing. Yeah. And, and I assume it worked, right? It grabbed everybody's attention. It did indeed. Wow. Uh, so that could have been very effective and very dangerous. I have to say that if you're going to pick a weapon when you're in prison, whether it's a shank, 
tank or our improvised nunchucks or not, a not mill the most wall practical brick. to run around with a bomb. But also kind of the most badass. It's like, well, yeah, he's got a shank, but uh, Larry over re here? Re real life junk rat? Yeah, <laughs> he's got a bomb. <laughs> what grade do we give them? I'm going to give them uh, a C. It's yeah. really simple. It doesn't require a lot of uh, ingenuity. Well, and also they didn't use it to any benefit and yeah. they got caught testing. So, uh, they screwed C, it up. C plus. C plus? C okay, uh, I think that's fair. Yeah. A secret glider hidden in the attic of a prison castle. Dude, I love this one. Prisoners of war building a fully functioning 32 foot wingspan glider hidden behind a false wall in the attic of the prison. Yeah, and the prison was supposed to be inescapable. It was actually where they sent people who had already escaped from various prison camps. Yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, Stalag 13, Stalag 17, uh, uh, The Great Escape. Uh, yeah, like, like the, the, where they tunneled. Yeah, exactly. So everyone was afraid that people were going to be tunneling out of this castle, but no, instead these prisoners were up in the attic building a massive glider. So here's the tragedy of the story is they built this glider up there. They never got the chance to fly it because I guess uh, wars ended and other people inherited the prison. The but Soviets took control of the castle and all of their hard work was gone, but they were free. Yes, correct. So I would imagine that they're okay with that. Yeah, but my plane! I never got to fly my plane! <laughs> yeah. They did, however, years later, make a recreation based on the exact measurements of the original glider. And that thing flew, dude. Yeah. This would have worked. That's not what I expected. I really expected this story to end like Wiley e. Coyote. They jump off the parapet and I'm, gi I'm giving this one an A minus. The only reason it's not an A plus is because I wanted to see this thing fly. Yeah. And I guess it did fly eventually, yeah. or the, the plans flew. You know, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna say this is an A. The only reason that we can't give it like an A plus is because they really never got to try it and weren't successful. And that's really society's fault, not theirs. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, hold off on sieging the castle and freeing all these POWs yeah. until, until their science project pays off. You know, it's like, keep them there. Just, to, all right, guys, listen. Good news, the war is over. We just need to play act like you're still prisoners. Don't yeah. worry, everything's catered from now on. Yep. You all have internet access. Don't just tell the guys easy. in the attic. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't just want to see if they're going to fly. They're going to be so heartbroken if they don't get to finish this. So. Uh, let's do it for Larry. <laughs> Everyone whispers, for Larry. Larry. <laughs> Painting over the exit sign with peanut butter. I'm going to say a sentence that makes no sense, and then you have to explain how this is true. In Alabama, prisoners used peanut butter to escape from prison. Yes. And that sounds like, like peanut butter as a weapon. Like maybe you blinded them in the eyes, you stuffed it in their ears, and you stuffed Not crunchy! <laughs> no! <laughs> but they didn't do any of this. This is pure deception, right? Yeah, well, but peanut butter is one of those things, like in prison, where you find that it has various uses. Like toothpaste. Like toothpaste, yes. This was used as kind of a putty to cover up the numbers to a room. And so they just kind of smeared over it and then painted over that, and then the sign for this door was so, gone. So the door had a sign that says, escape, do not open. They took peanut butter, smeared it all over it, yeah. and it took some paint, and then wrote, uh, uh, definitely another cell. Yeah. And then, and then they hung around waiting for the new guy to come by, and he was like, hey man, I'm locked out of my cell. It's this one, the one that says definitely a cell. Yeah, and okay. the new guy, the new guard comes in and he says, yeah, sure, opens it up. And these guys all escape into a wing of the prison where they weren't supposed to be. 12 of them escaped, uh, 11 of them were caught within the first eight hours, but one of them took several days before they were caught. Yeah. I, I think uh, I give bonus points for this. This sounds like a Frank Abagnale story, right? Oh, Where it's, it's like really bluff and clever. cluster. I, I give them a solid B plus. I, I would give them a B mainly because they got caught and it didn't work, but it was pretty clever. They just had to prey upon the stupidity of one person. I'll tell you, it reminds me of other prison build stories where at one point somebody used a potato to escape from prison. They took a potato and they carved it in the shape of a gun and then they painted it. And so then they were able to pull this out and in the in the, in the the terror of the moment, people were like, oh, that's a gun. And he, he escaped from prison doing that. Now that's a spud gun. Medium security makeshift nunchucks. All right, let's talk about Lorenzo Pollard at a St. Louis prison who went full on ninja. 
a man after my own heart. This is you. This is you. Because I just remember that Nunchucks build, like, there's that moment you could tell, I just saw hours and hours in the backyard of practice on your face and yes. in your moves. Yes. Lorenzo Pollard made them out of chair legs and bed sheets. I would imagine they were a little more effective than ours. He should have used paracord. Uh, he should have used paracord. <laughs> so this dude makes a pair of nunchucks, obviously knows what he's doing because he fought his way through security guards and escaped. Yeah, he beat up many, many guards with makeshift nunchucks. I love that. My favorite part of his tale is that at one point, he broke one of those super thick security glass things with the nunchucks while holding off a dozen armed guards. They, they should have just let him go. This guy is a total badass. All of the guards are just weeping openly saying, Godspeed. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, this one, it doesn't have a lot of ingenuity to it. It's not super inventive. It's just, I'm going to take this and I'm going to escape from this prison. These things. I'm going to beat the hell out of people and I'm going to get out of prison with chair legs and sheets. All right, you just upgraded me from a C plus to a B minus. He made, he made the grade. I would agree. Yes, okay. B minus it is. The Death Row Improvised Playing Card Bond. Now this next one actually makes me think of you. <laughs> because I'm a murderer on Death Row. No, because it involves playing cards. Oh, and, and I'm a magician. Also that. Got it, yes. Okay. William Cogat in San Quentin Prison in the 1930s. He was contrite uh, about the murder he had committed, and so he decided to end his life. So, and it's very clear, like he wrote a suicide note saying like, really sorry for killing that guy. Look, I know either way, the road ends for me. I don't want to wait until you guys electrify me or whatever it is. It's the 1930s. I'm not really sure. He wrote all that in the letter. And then he, so he says, therefore, I'm going to kill myself using these playing cards. My ultimate magic trick. Yeah. Mr. Kogut built a device, basically a pipe bomb. Yeah. So he took one of the legs off of his cot, which so you got a tube, right? A metal tube. He stuck a broom handle in one side to seal off the one side. And then he took a uh, chopped up a deck of playing cards and put water in there, stuffed the cards down and then basically heated up the water till it steamed and the pressure got so much that it just exploded and he just aimed it right at the side of his head. Yep, so Mr. Kogut made a playing card shotgun. Yeah. Uh, what would you rank it? <sighs> For inventiveness, that's that's a that's a A. That's a solid A. I mean, I'm bummed that it's about a suicide. I'm bummed that he's a murderer. That sort of dampens the story. I can yeah. only give him a... A B plus, it's a B. super a B. inventive. Maybe but. a B minus, but also you're, you're, he's a murderer yeah. on death row, but he was sorry. Yeah, but he, he didn't use it for self gain or to escape. Also, he could do a hell of a trick in heaven where it's like, name a card, name a card. Queen of Clubs, hold on. Is this, uh, no, it's not. That's gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's really gruesome. He's, he's killing it in open mic night. Uh, now, I would be interested for us to actually see how that experiment works, because I'm not entirely clear on the visuals of what the card paper shotgun looks like. Are you saying you want to build a uh, card shotgun? I think I think that's exactly what I'm I saying. I kind of think we should. Okay. All right. Done. Done and done. But, you know, not see it all the way through. Well, uh, oh, no. That's not what we... Why would you even... <sighs> this is oh, terrible. This went to a dark place. Jason Murphy, are you there? I'm right here. Okay, good. I'm in a cruise ship in Hawaii, and there was a lot going on as I left, but one thing... I did make sure to grab before I left was my bomb fell package. Did you get yours? I did. I got it right here. I'm ready to dig in in hopes that I look way more fly than you will ever look. Uh, I hope people still say fly. I'm pretty sure they forbade us from using the word fly in this integration completely. <laughs> Sorry, All right, Bonfell. So, uh, for the uninitiated, Bonfell is amazing. It's basically a personalized stylist, somebody who gets what you're all about, somebody who works one-on-one -on -one with you to get you exactly the kind of clothes you would get on your own. It's about saving time. It's about looking better. It's not some kind of janky mystery box or some dumb subscription where you're trapped getting stuff and they're like, "Sorry, bro. Enjoy this box of." Rice. Rocks. We think it's a hit. I haven't gotten any rocks yet. I don't think there are any rocks in here. Not one. Not one rock. <laughs> no, but my favorite part about signing up was it asks you, hey, what would you never ever wear? Okay, what do you like to wear? Describe your body, your height, your weight. And then once they have all your measurements, somebody looks at you and the type of thing that you like to wear and personally puts together this package. I'm so excited to open mine. I'm really excited because every time I go clothes shopping for myself, one time I had like medical scrubs and like a leather vest and it was it was a it was a scene, man. It was bad. <laughs> They send you, they're like, hey, this is what the stylist is sending you. If you don't like it, 
tell us now so that we can make it right. Then you get it, you open it, you try it on. Then you got seven more days to say, you know what? I thought I would like this, but I wasn't gonna like it. From what I saw, I think I'm gonna dig it. Uh, how about you? Did you feel good about what you saw? No, I didn't even check because oh. you get the email and you can decide, right? You could strike something down. I didn't even look. So this is a total surprise. Oh, I'm very excited. Okay, here, we'll both open right now. I got, oh, 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 oh. More than I expected in here, hold on. First of all, I got a welcome pack. They called me friend. I like that. Oh, measuring tape. He even gave me a little craft paper, uh, uh, moleskin style writing book. Yeah. So I can write down my yeah, thoughts. Yeah, dude, the journal. You know how I am about journals. I'm afraid to use the, the tape for fear of what it's gonna tell me about my body. When they asked me what my body type was, I just said, gross. And <laughs> they, they were like, we got you, bro. That's cool. They apparently know that I love uh, kind of olive green looking shorts. Yeah, okay. Is this a, oh, this is short sleeve, how perfect. It's like they knew I would was gonna be in Hawaii. <laughs> did they Did they get you an Aloha shirt? <laughs> Dude, by the way, I saw a volcano yesterday. That was amazing. Oh. Dude, I think I'm gonna be deeply in love with Baumfeld. I'm, I'm into it. Short sleeve button down shirt, quality, soft, I dig it, collared. Short sleeve Henley, it's pretty slick. Can't wait to try that on. Shorts, some very fashionable, nice gray shorts. This is all gonna look really good together too. I'm gonna jump off camera. I'm gonna put on these clothes. I'm gonna model them and I'll, I'll send you a picture of how I look. I just realized I thought I was off camera, but I don't think I'm off camera right <laughs> now. <laughs> Jason, I'm not gonna lie. I'm on a cruise ship and there's a legit ass shuffleboard court upstairs. I think I belong instantly up there looking dapper as freaking hell. You look pretty slick. I gotta say, this is actually more stylish than I have ever seen you look. Now like, now you're just insulting Brian, the regular fashion guy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying, don't dress yourself. I mean, don't not dress yourself, but just let Bombfell do it from, yeah. from like now on. Okay, so here's the important thing. For anybody who wants to hop in this train, whether you're somebody who's too busy, you already, let's say you already know the kind of stuff that you like, but you don't have time to do it. Or if you're looking to upgrade your fashion and try on some other stuff, head on over to bombfell.com slash rogue. That's R-O-G-U-E. You get 25 off your first purchase. Also, they have a deal where the more stuff you decide to keep, because again, you get to decide how much or how little you want, the more you save, like 10%, 20%, on and on and on. Uh, dude, Bombfell has uh, reinvigorated me. Uh, like my whole yeah. wardrobe is gonna start looking amazing thanks to Bombfell. Let the professionals handle it. Stop looking like some sort of hobo clown. I feel like this I, is you directly talking to me. I'm not talking about you specifically. You've never looked like a clown. B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L dot com slash R-O-G-U-E. Sign up, look good, keep us in business, and uh, have your very own stylist. How great is that? I'm gonna look good. What you will learn is that my word is law. <laughs> You're like, uh, in all my years of military service, <laughs> let me tell you a story about when I was patrolling a small system on the outskirts in the outer rim. Yeah. Don't do that. It sucks. Sand sucks. Remember that. <laughs> How did we get to Vader as a commencement speaker? I'm sorry. <laughs>